base building, especially with Mark. But uh, as I'm saying this, we will see the first defense already, Woody. It's Vanna coming in for Batzinger with the first attack of war number two. I believe that this is the most evenly matched lineup for our first round of matches in the bracket. They both have a 3-1 and one record advancing from the Swiss stage. They both have exactly 11.2 average stars. And they're only <laughs> separated in average destruction by less than 2%. Badzinger taking a little bit of a lead there because their MVP, Vane, right here, has over a 99% on the hit rate side. Uh, recorded from the swiss stage now his just average destruction is just through the roof because he is one of their most reliable attackers and he's brought super minions in here to bring some long range damage action uh um, maybe for this cc pull out in the left side corner what do you think max yes uh i do think you're right i like this strategy and i know that vanna has been using uh, electro dragons loads of times and you said it he has a very very good hit rate uh, for his team with these Electro Dragons. It's the troop that he prefers to use at the moment. And uh, it's uh, also a very common call. We will see what the result was. And yes, he got the Town Hall down, Woody, the most important building of the base. And this is still looking pretty strong. Yeah, those defending super minions look like they have just done a lot of work, though, since they're both up and still attacking troops on all sides of the base. This Archer Queen's going to have to do a 360 no-scope real quick and take them down before she can retarget onto the monolith, but no, doesn't finish it off. That means that it's up to the Royal Champion to get the last shots off. But wow. But really, we have the super minions still. We have the super minions, and now okay. he's exactly okay. trying to use them as we said before. It doesn't look happy, uh, though. No, he misplaced both of them. He wanted to target the monolith, I think, but the first one went to the buildings on the upper side left on the base, oh. and the second one, you can see it, to the building on the right side. Maybe now that the king is tanking, ah, but the time is also running out, Woody, and this is going to fall short very, very no. close to the first three star. So ever close to getting that triple and you know that if he had just got those super minions down a little bit differently, if he had maybe got that Barbarian King placed a little bit earlier. Uh, having been able to uh, prepare exactly for their opponent for this one. And we know that this is the most important tournament so far this year the f with the first, um, you know, golden ticket for the World Championship on the line. So both teams, I guess, um, invested a lot of time in the last week to make sure they have bases that hold back their opponents. And maybe the result of that was this low score in the first war and we will have to wait and see if it stays like that in war number two as simon is coming in with a uh, warden walk and into electro titans uh, a pretty common strategy on town hall 15 woody i think it's kind of the new um smash strategy we saw um Hekka smash was a strategy uh, before super bowler smash or bowler smash and at town hall 15 the, the electro titan smash has become very popular popular and we saw that he used the zap spells with the uh, with the um, earthquake at the start and this has two purposes number one take out some defenses in this case the um, expos and also activate the town hall with the earthquake so we can see the flame flinger now making its way towards that activated town hall and finally taking it out really. Some players, you are just so impressed by their dexterity, the speed of their fingers flying across the screen. I am just just mesmerized by Simon's focused attention. He has just got his eyes laser locked onto that device, deploying uh, just everything, but watching, most importantly, just watching. Absolutely. He's, he's doing like a good job like... setting up for the initial. <laughs> I'm just like, like wowed by his uh, like zoomed in focus now. The flame player taking out the town hall and uh, shaping up for the attack on the interior of the base, but he hasn't even uh, deployed everything yet. He's going to get a little bit of rage action in the core there, but takes down the Eagle Artillery, uh, and with the heroes now collapsing back along the outer edge, we still have one multi-target Inferno in the core that they weren't able to reach, Maxi. Could that cause some problems later on, or does he have a plan for it? It could, but as you said, Simon is so so fixated there on this uh, on his iPad. It wouldn't surprise me if he, if he would just dive right into it and destroy this multi inferno <laughs> by, itself, by itself. But he doesn't have to because the queen is actually retargeting. What a clever queen here! 
through the jump spell, taking out the multi inferno. And now there's not a lot of base left, um, Woody. He has the royal champion, he has the CC troops, but two enemy heroes that could cause some problems here. Yeah, big damage gonna get output by them. A huge obstacle to face off against at the very end. That enemy king is just chopping through these yetis. But the yeti mites will not be distracted. They're still hopping onto defenses and trying to give a little bit of breathing room for these last two heroes. I mean, look, there's still two electro titans. So Simon is not running out of offensive firepower. He's only running out of time. 96% from Badzinger in their attack, and guess what? It's a 96% two-star. With the um, Yetis there taking on the enemy king, um, but uh, I think uh, I think uh, it, this uh, decision that he made was good as well, because he couldn't know that there were so many traps there, holding back his royal champion there to just taking out a couple of the buildings. So, um, yeah, so far, very good attacks that got very close, and now we have the next one. It is Kadiel coming in with the Queen Charge Hybrid. And Kadiel is a... Um, attack, uh, a um, Queen Charge Hybrid Professional, Woody, I should say, um, because that is oh. also his f favorite strategy in Legends. Um, I think in the last Legend League seasons, he has switched um, to Queen Charge Lalo, but um, especially on the uh, other Town Hall levels, at Town Hall 14, he used to use the strategy every single time in the Legend League uh, push. And so he is uh, one of the most experienced players with the Queen Charge Hybrid. So let's see, bringing it back to the table today, what he can do here. And this looks like a very heavy charge, Woody. So many defenses, so much damage, and the Queen is already low on HP. Let's hope he can keep her alive. Gotta keep those fingers crossed. She's fired away at the Eagle, takes it Ooh. down. The Royal Cloak is popped, and she'll get a few more shots off here. But how is she going to reach that monolith? She is in range of it, but it is not in her sight yet. And just firing away at the wall now. It's a raged up set of healers to try to keep her alive against so much damage coming on in. She'll finally get the lock off there. Takes it down. Kadil has just got so much staying power from this assault. But when you commit so many troop space to those healers and they can't even keep that queen alive to the end, He's going to have to pivot to the Hogs now. He does get the healer swap. Good news for him there. They won't be useless. But how much has this Hog army got left to do? Quite a bit. And with that Giga Poison just exploding right in their face, I'm seeing a lot of fried pork going to be uh, just sitting on a platter here. Stefan will be feasting on it later on because it looks like the defenses are going to hold Maxi. Yes, it sure looks like it, and I uh, I guess that Kadiel was um, expecting his queen to to survive a little bit longer, either taking um, taking out the back end scatter shot with uh, stepping back and using the wall break he you can see here on the right side that he made, and that would have been incredible value. But uh, when he when uh, the queen made her way to the core, I think he lost focus a little bit while he was trying to make sure to take out the town hall, and um, the queen actually died to the enemy queen. Um, yeah, it was a very close call. I mean, the queen would have, uh, if she would have taken out the enemy queen, she would have also tanked the scatter shot for the longest time. So he might have had a chance, even with the queen banging uh, through the wall into the core of the base. But if she had gotten what he had planned her to do, uh, then I think this would have been a three star. But still, um, a very good attempt here from Cardiel, finishing in the mid 80s here, not as high as the uh, two other players before. But as we learned from the very first war, Woody, uh, three stars have been very rare today. So it's up to um, Inquisition now to uh, make the most of it. Uh, yeah. uh, a really strong uh, second hit from him uh, in previous war. They were fighting through the Swiss stage. Uh, and seeing him now return with another queen charge, these five healers backing him up again. It's just like a completely different meta from the previous war, Maxi. <laughs> yeah, you're right. The, the previous war was definitely a kind of out of the meta. I mean, it's not like we haven't seen any super dragons or uh, infernal baby dragons been used um, before at this stage, but you are absolutely right that Lalo has usually been uh, used a lot more, and now we are back to it here in this one, but we st yet have yet to see the first um, the first successful hit here, and I feel like this um, the charge that Einstein is doing is... Uh, you know, not really surprising for a base builder. It's uh, it's a box base, and it's like 
kind of a typical charge um, you, where you use the, the flame flinger on the on the flank to make sure the queen goes in. But he has to make sure to wall break now, make, uh, take care of the enemy CC. So a lot of things he has to do at the same time now. And he is very unfortunate here because the wall breakers just died to the super balloon, to the rocket balloons. I think it was their splash damage that they do. And they were actually, oh, targeting the queen and he uses the second wall break and it also failed. So now he will have a hard time with his queen getting into the you know the these buildings the the multi inferno and the eagle artillery all these buildings that uh, you know can kill a lalo attack so quickly and also the monolith took out his um, flame flinger so something's going wrong here woody and now he has to make sure he still get the town hall down as the lalo comes in with the support of the warden to uh, take care of it well it's going to sprint out a bit here a lot of them go for the core but a lot of them also on the exterior along with those pups trying to get some uh, early cleanup work done. Tornado Trap spins those balloons around right as they path out of that Giga Inferno uh, and poison damage. And that is just in time for them. Great pre-spell additions from Einstein here trying to keep them up a little bit longer. But the splash damage is just, is just so difficult for these balloons to deal with. Invis on the Royal Champion and she finally does take that top compartment down but a defending queen is just gonna reign supreme here maxi two stars and at 81 percent he needs to topple that 84 percentage in order to come in above badzinger looks like he will be able to do that his attacking queen herself is going to be stuck on a lot of walls though and that means three stars is out of the question yeah he won't get a lot more percentage points though and uh, they, they the two teams will keep on being very close together but honestly i feel like einstein adjusted very well here and still did very good given how many things went wrong here you could see it and on the, on the top side the enemy queen and the eagle artillery both still up um, and also the multi inferno and the monolith have been up uh, for so long and then those were all buildings that he intended his queen to take out so getting an almost 90 percent two star here with the queen basically just you know following the king and the lalo um, through that was nearly what got class champs the victory but as we all know it's that three star strike that is the decisive advantage for one team or the other. We're gonna see an interesting start here from BN. Very precise deployments here from these spells now. Getting some skellies out to stab down that enemy monolith. He's even using those invisibilities to make sure that they're targeted right onto the correct defenses. Finishing off that clan castle as well. Maybe the most important defense to take out early on. Now I yeah, see I... those rage spells on defense ready to pop into the multi infernos, but Maxi, give us a sense for how that shapes up the base for the second stage. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I definitely agree that Clan Castle is the strongest defense here, and yeah, you can see already um, the shape. Uh... Or, or the base becoming a shape as he is moving with his queen and king from the right side. Queen should take out the town hall and you could see the multi inferno and the CC were right behind the town hall. So once the queen takes out the town hall and the king takes out the uh, scatter shot up there, the, the um, base kind of becomes an L shape. Uh, the, the L shape along these three inferno towers and then along the outside compartments. And that is exactly where he's going to send in his Lalo now get through this L shape but the, the multi infernos might become a problem throughout, uh, towards the end of the attack uh, and as I'm saying that his clan castle troops actually come out and that was uh, very very well planned there from the end with the rocket balloons and the um, dragon rider taking out this first multi inferno and now it is really just up to this back end compartment but he moves in there this you know strong armor there still with his warden ability and three freeze spells he just has to make sure he takes out the enemy queen he forgot to send the headhunters through the warden ability and with this ground expo and so many defenses around there he will have a hard time to send these headhunters in there unharmed to take out the enemy queen but so many balloons would he i think he might even be getting it it has just been blizzard supreme from bn just dropping those free spells time and again, and the enemy queen had nothing to do about it. Electro Owl zaps right through her, and if you want to see a magic act, rewind and watch this attack again, because BN has been doing his best to turn this L into a W, and with just a couple of defenses along the top side, he looks well positioned to make that happen. It's not quite yet guaranteed because that wizard tower can do massive damage and with mostly pups and minions, they are vulnerable. 
Let's give him our bated breath and hope that he can do his best to finish this face off. He's charging in now. The last minute is along the top trying to distract. Keep the pressure off. 10 seconds left. The Phoenix is stacked on top. Pops, minion, charge. Get it in there. No time like the present being. Can he do it? No! The wizard of that he wanted to be 100% sure to take out the clan castle because he used the fourth invisibility spell that he might have been able to save, but he knew that you know this is a very important attack, so better be safe than sorry. And uh, he he might have been happy to have that um, invisible spell towards the end of the attack, but in my opinion, he did everything right there and just got a little unlucky. Now, to on to the next one, Fabian coming in with another queen charge but woody we see a queen charge electro dragon um a very a very nice um kind of new attack strategy that we've been recently seen uh, sometimes a queen charge on the opposite side and then uh, of the town hall and then electro dragons into the town hall he uses the recall spell which is also often used in this attack strategy for the queen the queen i think she went the wrong way he wanted her to get probably the multi inferno and she went unfortunately into this compartment but he did very well there um, in recalling her when she was almost um, at a, at a no H no more HP forcing the ability and then putting her down in a corner where there's no damage so the unicorn and healers could rebuild uh, her health point hit points there now sending in the big bolt of electro dragons Woody and now things are getting excited can he get this town hall down will enough electro dragons survive it's electrifying! Fabian making his way deep into the space now, still Ooh. protected by the Eternal Tome. Zaps down that mono, such a crucial defense to take out. Freezes the RC and a scatter shot. Lots of damage just shut down on this defensive run, but he is now almost out of spells. Just a poison to throw out at some hero, I guess, on defense. And uh, damage has just been flipped back on like a switch, watching those Electro Dragons Vanish into thin air. BN's defenses are going to be a big scare now for Fabian with just heroes along the bottom side of the space to try to clean up what remains 28% still standing tall. Fabian is going to have to make it in with just that royal champion ability to toss a shield off and around, but I don't think it's going to be enough, Maxi. Yes, I agree with you, and unfortunately, I think that is due to a slight execution mistake <laughs> execution execution mistake there from fabian because he lost his queen there he used a invisibility spell combination with a rage spell to try to make sure she gets back to full health and walks into the scattershot queen compartment but he used the spell slightly too late and that forced him to use the king and royal champion into this compartment and just imagine if the queen would have gotten that value and he could have sent the royal champion and the king from the top side or the right side where we can see just a couple of defenses left in this base this is closer than it looks it was a very very nice plan but uh, unfortunately fabian was not able to take to keep his queen alive and we continue the task because it's like you want to get excited I, I get pumped up when it gets so close but when do I finally get that sweet release and see that triple that we've been so long looking for? Yeah. ND might be the one to bring it. Uh, one of our favorite attackers who has so long been at the top of the Clash game. We'll see if he is going to be the one uh, who can heroically deliver that three star. And early on, he's getting uh, a Laloon deploy here, taking a stab down at the bottom with a Battle Blimp as well to try to take this Town Hall down. It's kind of well protected deeper on inside the base than you sometimes seen here and that's going to require a big commitment from ND to take it down but with those sneaky goblins popping out it should be the yes. first star claim yeah, but, you know, also at the same time he was doing something at the top side, using the Dragon Riders in combination with the bad spells to make sure he takes out the Eagle Artillery. And this is a very interesting base design, I gotta say, because we have seen the Monolith so um, exposed there on the bottom side of the base. It was just protected by a couple um, of Black Mines there, and uh, I think that ND was expecting this and used his Balloons with the with the um, uh, Lava Hound very, very well to take it out, and we can see Woody, the complete top side of the base is gone, the complete bottom side of the base is gone, and especially the Eagle Artillery and the Monolith, both, um, you know, true um, uh, buildings that can take out 
a lot of troops at the same time, but his uh, his um, Inferno Dragons kind of thinned out a lot there before he was able to use the Warden ability. I was just about to say that once he gets through the core uh, or into the core, he can use a beautiful Warden ability. There are just a couple of them left, but Woody, the most important thing is he still has his heroes and is just deploying them at the top side. King with the Queen and still has the Warden uh, Royal Champion in hand. A beautiful invisibility spell on this. Um, Inferno Dragon taking out the multi Inferno, making sure the, the troops can reach all the buildings left in the base. And this is sure looking like a three star, as we can see him smiling. Oh, there yeah! In the, on the bottom side, Woody. What a beautiful attack. Finally, we have seen it! Badzinger coming in with the first three star of this war on the seventh attack. Lucky number seven by ND gives us exactly what we're looking for in the core so he really negated the base's weaknesses so i'm not going to say that the base was bad but Bedzinga was able to find the weakness of the base and that is where base building uh, why base building matters so much so i completely agree with andre defense has been very very important so far today and i think it still will be and we see looking at the defense another box base here from Vanna here. Um, I think it's the base design of choice from Bad Zinger in this um, in this war today. While well, Inquisition has been using more diamond shaped bases, and uh, once again, um, Woody, we see a uh, returning pattern here with the Queen Charge and the Flame Flinger alongside um, the the Town Hall, and then later on sending in a big force of Electro Dragons into the Town Hall. Yeah, a lot of damage, but only five Electro Dragons this time. He's committing a lot more troops instead to this Queen Charge along the bottom. Just plenty of balloons to support and seeking out those big black bombs, making sure that they don't cause any problems for those healers. Balloons moving in perfectly and getting a lot of spread inside there, but not actually finding any Seeking Air Mines. Stefan might have to worry about these Electro Dragons instead, catching some of them earlier uh, in, in the raid, but he's going to protect them with that Eternal Tome right on top of that monolith. Should be able to zap it down, but man, there's still a lot in the back side of these bases. Big compartments on the rear side uh, of Bonnet's base here just could cause some pr trouble. We get some chain lightning damage on to all the way up uh, to that multi-target Inferno and a Rage Tower up on the top side of the base, but not yet taken down the Eagle, which is firing away now at that Grand Warden. Ooh, Very low well on health. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah, Max. you said you were just talking about the eagle, and th at the exact same moment it was taking it out. And this is looking like a three star to me already. He's got so many spells in the in, in the back. He's got the king and the royal champion coming in from the top side. And the most impressive thing was how he was able to um, to keep the queen and the uh, flame flinger at the same time alive. He was sending in some surgical um, giants at the top side, and the the um, the flame flinger had so much value for so long. He even timed the king perfectly, so the king was tanking the um, the ground targeting expo there for the flame flinger to get even more value and with the royal champion and the free spell we can see him popping his fast at the bottom side here he will have enough to take it out but really there is still the storage at the top side and if there are some skelly traps the time could be um, an issue here but other than that he will have enough force with these two heroes to take out the rest of the base Nicely done to Stefan. If Inquisition were going to have a chance at a win, they needed those back-to-back -back three stars, and Stefan has done his part with 99%. It is a march to victory now, as the Royal Champion and Diggy will take out that last elixir storage. Fire it away and finish it off. Stefan gets the three star for Inquisition. And that was exactly what... There's an advantage, though, for Badzinger. If Dima gets a 94% two-star, that will mean that Inquisition will be required to get a triple in order to win because it will be impossible for them to move over the hill on percentage. However, if Dima gets less than a 94%, Inquisition could still somehow win on the percentage race. It will be a very tight one, and Inquisition really do almost need that triple to win. But if Dima yeah. gets the three-star himself, it'll be all over now. Badzinger are in the driver's seat. Can they make it past the finish line? We see Super Riches with the final attack. A slow attack, to be sure. 
but it has a lot of staying power. And if you can get those big boys out in front and keep those witches safe on the backside, you should have a solid chance at victory. He's starting out really slowly though, with also a Warden Walk and the Flame Flinger in the top left. What are the key defenses he's looking to take out here, Maxi, so that the shaping up of this base is just perfectly positioned for this remaining hit? Yeah, I think mainly he wanted to make sure that the Warden tanks this ground targeting expo, but now the Royal Champion is on the Warden. That is not good. He tries to use the freeze. Burn. It was just in time. But now the Royal Champion has to be taken out quickly, so the Warden does not activate his ability too early. And that was such a close call there, but Dima with the free spell making sure he can use the Warden ability in the center of the base, where it makes way more sense because all this ray, all this, you know, clumped up damage there. And we see the Warden ability go to make sure to protect these, um, these Super Witches, but Woody, we also know that Super Witches um, are uh, sometimes a very slow attack. That is why he didn't take too much time there with the, uh, with the Warden walk. And now he's got a really, really nice split. Also perfectly deployed Rage spell to make sure the Queen can take out the town hole under rage and the the, the skellies uh, the, the big boys i mean with the uh, witches actually go to the core of the base taking out the multi inferno and all the damage around there now the king with the help of the royal champion at the bottom side at the same time working their way throughout the outside to join up with the witches and as i say that woody there are no more witches they got obliterated by the splash damage in the core of the base and that's what i meant with the clumped up damage and here it doesn't have a lot more uh, to go with basically just the royal champion ability she takes on the enemy queen and we can see his disappointment at the bottom we are talking about percentage and woody this is not going to get high percentage in fact it's going to be the lowest percent attack in this war so far and inquisition will know the mark after this attack and we will have a deciding 10th attack of this war this looks like inquisition's war to lose now from a spot where bad singer were ahead by eight percent this super witch strike by dima is going to finish off at 70 percent it looks like uh, maybe get 71. Nope. No, Monolith says no to that. Oh yeah. 71 out at the bottom. At the bottom. So 71. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For that little goblin. 71 plus the eight percentage that they already had. Been as close as it gets between these two teams. And now we can see ink mark at the bottom of your screen guys. And he will come in with the deciding attack. Remember 79% is the tie. 80% is what he aims to get to make sure he, uh, they win the war. Let's see if he can get it done. Mark has brought in Electro Dragons again for this Queen Charge army out on the left. Electro Dragons are just so beefy and strong and reliable. But that's just what the same thing I said about the Super Witches is. It's all about the shaping up of this early strike and how he sets the funnel for these Electro Dragons to follow. I'm liking a lot how he started so far. And with the recall spell out and down now, the Queen is going to make her attack along the top corner of this base. Should get another air defense down. And Mark is looking very confident to get the second one out on the right corner with the Flame Flinger. You start to see a smile creeping onto his face because you know things are going well early on for him. The Electro Dragons are down now. Stack on a Grand Warden. Add the balloons in, and that is a recipe for disaster on Kadil's base. Badzinger have got to hold on for dear life, because here comes the thunder. Mark is storming in for victory. Yes, but, you know, the town hall is pretty far inside the base, so it is. he needs to get this town hall, so early warden ability now. Now, there might be a tornado trap, there is not so far, but this one electro dragon is in the single inferno. He needs to get another blow onto the town hall, and he just gets it before it goes down. He got the second star, Woody, but now it's about percentage. 80%, remember, and by the, I think he's looking good. He has the royal champion, he has the king. Just deploy the king at the bottom side, for example, at 6 o'clock. There are so many free buildings, and he will make sure that his team gets to the next uh, or to the next match in the winner's bracket but Woody I think he's not worrying about percentage anymore he knows that he could even turn this into a three star if he is um, if he is keeping his heroes alive for the longest time royal champion taking out the single queen on the eagle artillery king going strong and mark showed us no nerves today unfortunately pops the king ability in the tornado trip but I think 
ah, it, it's still close, but you know, he won't care about if it's a triple. These two stars, I said it when I was still an active player, these two stars are worth more than any three star you'll ever get. Um, because uh, it will get your team a very much needed victory. And as I'm saying this, he is making sure it becomes a three star anyways, Woody. What a great closer here. Ink Mark getting Inquisition the victory, making sure they go to the next round as winners. Ink has blotted out Badzinger from the upper bracket and they will move on victorious. That means that we'll get a chance to see them face off against the Clash Champs later today. Congratulations to Inquisition! Winners in the upper bracket match against Bad Zinger. Take a look now at the war stats as you see the 12 stars claimed by Inquisition and a decisive percentage lead as well. Defenses aplenty in this second match in addition to the first. But finally, we start to see that offense ticking up a little bit. We see the percentage advantages just kind of tossing back and forth between these two teams. But the back-to-back -back triples in the end gave us the closing finish that Inquisition so desperately...